Hello, welcome to Yin Yoga. Hey, my name is Michelle Chua. Grab a couple of blocks, a strap, a blanket, a pillow, and any other additional props that you might use so you have more options for comfort. And let's start in a comfortable seat of your choice. You can sit up on a prop or not. Just allow your spine to be tall, shoulders relaxed. I <clears throat> chose to focus on the heart chakra today, which is Anahata chakra, region of the center of the upper torso, like chest, upper back, between the shoulder blades, which affects what lies in that area physiologically as well as energetically, what's cultivated there. So heart energy. I'd like to read about it from Wheels of Life. The heart requires an understanding and practice of balance between mind and body, inner and outer realms, self and other, giving and receiving. Opening the heart requires a transcendence of ego, allowing us to surrender to forces larger than the self. Lastly, opening the heart chakra requires an understanding and control of the breath, for it is the tool of physical and mental transformation. So throughout our physical practice today, we'll be interspersing different pranayama or breathing techniques. And we'll start with one. So besides heart openers, our live community that's practicing with us as this is being recorded, requested for some spinal twists, lower back release, and some quadricep opening for the physical body. So we'll integrate that as well. Let's begin with a check-in. Maybe close the eyes, maybe place a hand at the heart center, a hand at the lower belly, and be still. Scan your physical body for whatever sensations are here right now. Bring your awareness to the breath just as it is. Feeling the way it's coming and going. Tune into your energy body, more subtle, the layer in which the chakras, the energy centers, rest. And feeling your energetic state, now observe your mind. How is the activity of your mind? Is it feeling rather busy, calm, steady? spacious how are the content of the thoughts influencing the way you feel emotionally so now we're tuning into your mental emotional body though the chakras are potent in our energy body of course they affect and are affected by our different layers that we're already observing Now let's join the palms together at the heart. A moment of gratitude for anything you can feel gratitude for. Stoking the energy of the heart. And with that, clarifying intention, something you'd like to focus on today. And expand continue to grow after this practice. Qualities of a balanced Anahata Chakra include compassion, joy, harmony, forgiveness, inner and outer balance. Start to bring those qualities into the way you're now breathing. Now I invite you to choose someone, a community, an individual, or a cause to offer up your efforts to today, dedicating your practice to something. And now let's use our voices to feel the intentions and dedication. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, that we're setting. 
chanting together in three ohms. Inhale deeply. Uh, Closing the lips, breathe in deeply, filling up your lungs and your belly. Breathe out just as deeply through the nose. Equal length and depth of inhale and exhale. We're going to start the practice called Bhastrika Pranayama, a way to cleanse the lungs and help to activate energy of Anahata or heart chakra. There's a physical movement that will also help us to warm our shoulders that goes along with it. It's so where you bend your elbows apart to the height of your relaxed shoulders and make fists out of your hands. And as you breathe in deeply through the nose, you straighten the arms and spread the fingers wide. And as you exhale deeply through the nose, you rebend the elbows and refist the hands like this. So let's try 30 exhales. We'll pause. Let the natural breath come in as we just observe the effects of one round, and then we'll go another 30. Exhales of bellows breath, Bhastrika Pranayama. We'll pause, and then we'll go a last round. So three rounds of 30, counting your own. So you're going at your own pace. Pretty brisk pace, but deep inhales equal exhales. So let's prepare, bend the elbows apart, maybe steady your inward gaze at your brow center. And when you're ready, start counting 30 exhales and then relax after the 30th. And then relax, breathing normally, just observing the effects of the first of three rounds. And when you're ready, start the second round of 30 exhales on your own. When you finish 30, relax again and observe how you feel. And then last round of 30. Resting after you finish. And after you've rested after the third Bhastrika Pranayama round, let's begin practicing victorious breath or Ujjayi Pranayama. So closing the lips, slow the breath down where you can sustain the in-breath as slowly as the out-breath while creating a very gentle whispering sound by softly narrowing the back of your throat. Listen to that a few times as you're sitting still here and bring into the sound that you can hear, the qualities of your intention for this practice. 
and the qualities of balance as well as harmonizing efforts with ease in the breath. So there's a steadiness, but it's not all controlled. There's a gentle flow to the breath. And now let's continue cultivating these qualities in the mind and the body. So if you've been sitting cross-legged, switch the cross of the leg that's forward or on top. Now let's begin with a gentle seated twist. Place your right hand on the floor behind your pelvis, raise your left arm up. Press your two sitting bones down as you breathe in, lift from the base of your spine. Imagine restacking each vertebra and creating more space between each as you lift to your crown. Relax the shoulders down, keep the pelvis still, and exhale, begin to twist to the right, centering the twist. Just beneath your lowest ribs, lower the left hand on your lap, or maybe press the back of the hand against your outer right thigh. If you can still keep your crown aligned above your tailbone. Broadening your collarbones, lift your sternum, the area right between them, and then continue to turn your rib cage for about five more deep breaths here. Long inhales as you're lengthening your spine. Releasing exhales as you continue to twist. When you finish the fifth exhalation, unwind your spine. And let's keep grounding the two sitting bones. Plant your fingertips in front of you. Lift your chest. Hug the bottom of your front ribs into your back. And imagine you're trying to create the feeling of a flat back as you begin to bow from your hips slowly for about five breaths. With each inhale, press down through both of your sitting bones and continue to stretch your spine from your pelvis. And with your exhales, maybe bowing a little deeper as long as you can keep your throat open and is not closing it off and the front of your shoulders slightly rolled back and away from the neck. And when you're ready, pressing down to your hips again, Draw your fingertips towards you and begin to lift the chest as you breathe in to rise up. Let's circle the left hand to the floor behind your pelvis, raise your right arm up. Again, root down your two hips, lift up through the center of your spine, imagine restacking the vertebrae. Exhale as you turn the rib cage without moving the pelvis, and lower the right hand on your lap or press the back of it outside of your left thigh. Lift your sternum and lift through the back of your neck, back of your skull. Continue to spin your left ribs towards the wall behind you, your right ribs towards the left wall. Finishing one more full breath. Then unwind your spine. And now let's switch the cross the legs again so that as we fold, we can open the hips in balance. Root down your sitting bones, lift the front and back of your spine, and then start to hinge from the hips slowly, breath by breath, crawling your hands forward. Gently roll the fronts of your shoulder bones back, towards behind the ears and away from the neck. Leading with your heart by extending your sternum forward and slightly lifting it.
One more deep breath. Press down to your hips, walk your hands towards you, and as you breathe in, float your heart center up to rise. Let's come down to hands and knees and prepare for several rounds of cat-cow moving into larger and larger variations. We'll see in a minute. So spread your fingers flat and stretch the index fingers forward so they're parallel to each other or slightly turn them out, but not pointing at each other. Stack your shoulders over your wrists and step your knees about two inches behind your hips so that your feet are also hips width apart. Let's begin with inhaling as you glide your chest forward and coil it up, peeling the shoulders behind the ears, dropping them back and looking up, cow pose. Breathing out, slowly contract your belly to lift it, tucking the tailbone down as you drop the head to round the back into cat pose. Again, inhale, gliding the shoulder blades down your back ribs, expand your chest through your arms and up towards the sky. Exhale, lifting the navel towards your back. Tilt the pelvis back and dome the spine. Take another three slow cycles here of this traditional cat-cow pose, Vidalasana. Listening to your breath as you marry your movement to its pace. Let your attention swim in the sound of your breath. Soothing, like ocean waves, yeah, moving. Now we're gonna expand our cat-cow. Use the next inhale to lift the chest again, but tuck your toes. And as you exhale with bent knees, lift your hips back into downward facing dog. Now this is the range, really long. Inhale, lower the knees. Coil your chest up again to cow. Exhale, lift the knees. Draw the belly in, lift the hips back to downward facing dog. Keep going three more rounds of this longer version where we really need to slow the breath down to make it all the way to each end. Fine tune how you're synchronizing the full length of the in-breath to coil your chest up, reaching the top of the cow. And the full length of the out breath to lift the hips fully into downward duck. Notice how this is a practice of concentration, that sixth limb of yoga, dharana. Next time you lower your knees, Finish your cow pose, lifting the chest, and we're gonna change it by untucking the toes and bringing the feet together, exhaling into child's pose as you scoop the belly in, pull your hips back and down towards your feet, extending the arms forward, bowing the head. Then inhale, glide forward again into cow, peel the shoulders back and down, look up. Exhale, pull the hips back and down as you contract the belly. Lengthen the spine, stretch the arms forward. Keep going, three more. Again, synchronizing the full length of the in and out breath. Through the full length of cow and child's pose. We'll meet in child's pose for a few breaths so that we can keep the arms extended forward, keep your head low to the ground, and then walk your hands over to the right as far as you can comfortably reach. Turning this into a side stretch, lengthening into the left side of your torso, breathe into it. About five breaths. If you find there's room to deepen this, you can bend the right elbow up, you can step 
the left hand on the right hand, drawing the left hip towards the rear of your mat. When you're ready, walk your hands forward through center and switch to the left side. Breathing into your right side body. You might vary this posture the same way you may have done on the first side, like bending the left elbow up or stacking the right palm on top of the left. Couple more breaths. As you walk your hands forward, separate the feet, hips distance or wider apart as you tuck the toes and slowly walk up to the top of your mat, entering a standing forward fold with your knees, very generously bent. And make sure your feet are parallel to each other and here you might choose to have blocks in front of your feet on your tallest height to press your hands into for our half forward folds. Take a moment here with knees very bent, tilt your weight forward, relax your neck, relax your jaw, but lift the shoulder bones away from the neck at the same time. You might let your arms just shake out or you might hold opposite elbows and sway the spine. More breaths here. Is there anything feeling stuck or stagnant along the spine or in the mind? You might visualize that trickling down like a waterfall being transmuted by the earth as it lands. Let's take two clearing lines breaths here. Inhale deeply through your nose. Open your mouth and eyes wide. Stick out the tongue and release any sound as you exhale deeply. <sighs> One more time, deep breath in, fill up, fill up. And let it go. <sighs> Keep bending your knees. Place your fingertips onto the blocks or the ground ahead. And as you firm in the belly, inhale, draw your sternum through your upper arms, lengthening into a flat back. Glide the shoulders away from the neck. Hug the front ribs in, then exhale, bow over your legs again. This time, inhale, sweep your arms forward, rise all the way up to stand, roll the shoulders behind your ears, drop them down, look up, little back bend. Exhale, place your hands together in front of your heart center. Bring your intention back to mind. And let's move in a gentle version of Sun Salutation One. Inhale, sweep your arms forward. Roll your shoulders back, lift your heart, look up. Exhale, feel free to bend the knees as you bow forward. Press down on your blocks or the ground ahead and inhale, lengthen the spine forward. Walk your hands, maybe take the blocks with you outside of your heels and step the left knee behind you. Stay in the kneeling lunge as you breathe in, let your pelvis sink, roll the shoulders back and look up. As you breathe out, step back to hands and knees where your knees are directly under your hips and wrists under the shoulders, a plank variation. Inhale, glide forward. Keep the belly lifted and the neck long. As you exhale, hug your elbows to your ribs and slowly lower all the way down. Sphinx pose, slide the forearms to the floor, press the toenails onto the mat and lifting your chest, roll your shoulders behind the ears and down, lengthen the back of your neck. Take another deep breath, widen the collarbones. Slide your hands beside your floating ribs, hug your elbows to your sides, and now come into a gentle cobra. Keep the tops of your feet rooting down as you lift the chest gently. Exhale, sink into child's pose. Bring the feet together, lower your pelvis down to your heels and stretch the arms forward as you bow. Inhale, rock forward again to hands and knees and tuck your toes, feet hips distance apart. Exhale, lift the hips into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg behind you 
And as you exhale, gently step it forward beside your left thumb. Lower your back knee, hands on blocks or the floor. Stay here and breathe in as you sink your hips and look up, relaxing the shoulders down. Then exhale, step your right foot forward, hips distance from the left and bow. Press into the blocks in front of you or the ground. Anyhow, lengthen your spine forward like a flat back. Exhale, drop your head and bow again. Press to your feet, inhale, sweep your arms forward, rise all the way up, roll the shoulders behind the ears, hug the front ribs in as you back bend. Exhale, trace your palms in prayer down the center line of your body as though blessing yourself with your intention, hands at the heart. One more, second side, inhale, sweep your arms forward, roll your shoulders back and down. Listen to your breath as you exhale to bow, maybe bend the knees. Press into your blocks or the floor and inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Walk your hands back beside your feet and exhale, step the right knee back to a kneeling lunge. Stay here as you inhale, sink your hips, lift your heart and gaze. Place your hands and knees on the floor, exhaling into a variation of plank pose. Inhale, glide your torso forward, hug the front ribs in, lengthen your neck. Exhale, bend the elbows to hug your ribs, lower slowly to the floor. Press the tops of your feet down, and this time inhale into cobra, maybe a little bit higher as you peel the shoulders back. Then exhale, sink your hips to your feet, bring the feet together to touch, child's pose. Inhale, rock forward again to hands and knees, separate the feet hips width apart. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift the pelvis to downward facing dog. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhale, step it forward gently beside your right thumb. Hands on blocks of the ground, lower the back knee. Stay here as you inhale, look up and drop the shoulders back. Exhale, step the left foot hips distance from the right and fold at the top of your mat. Press into the ground or blocks in front of you. Inhale, lengthen your spine like a flat back. Exhale, bow forward again. Press to your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms forward. Rise and peel the shoulders back. Drop the tailbone towards the inner heels as you look up. Exhale, marry your palms at your heart center. Pause here. Maybe close the eyes for a few breaths. What's your body saying in this moment? Check in with your breath. As we prepare to open the shoulders just a bit more, take your strap please and let's hold it between your hands so that you have a taut grip of the strap, it's not hanging loose. And your hands are separated wider apart than shoulders distance. Come into mountain pose with feet hips width apart. Keeping your arms straight and your shoulders down away from your ears. Stand tall and hug your front bottom ribs in. As you inhale, raise your arms overhead, keeping the shoulders down. You might need to space the hands wider or closer together. Exhale the arms all the way behind you and down, keeping the arms straight. So adjust the space between your hands as you need. As you inhale, lift up and then keep that space. Exhale, arms forward and down. For at least another five breaths, inhale up, exhale back and down, inhale up, exhale forward and down, inhale up, exhale back and down. If you're feeling like your shoulders have gotten warmer, you might step the hands closer together, inhale up, making it a little more challenging. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale, up. Exhale, forward and down. One more. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. All right, let's come on down to sit and we'll prepare for Gomukhasana cow face pose. So extend your left leg forward and turn out your right thigh at the hip. Cross it over your left thigh as much as you can so that maybe you stack your knees down the midline of your body. 
Those of you that requested um, relief from pinched sciatic nerve, you might want to straighten the left leg and flex the foot. Keep this version of the pose. Otherwise, if it's available for you, bend both knees and splay your feet apart. And this will, you might feel more sensations of opening into the glutes, outer hips. Then you might use a strap here as we take the arms into cow face pose. Raising your left arm, hold the strap with your left hand and dangle the long tail behind your back. Use your right hand to help you rotate your left outer upper arm forward and bring the elbow behind your head. Pressing both shoulders down, reach the right hand behind you underneath and catch the other end of the strap. Then walk your hands as close together as you can. You might be able to clasp the hands and drop the strap. Press down through both hips, lift up from the base of your spine, back of the skull to the crown. Keep your throat open and as you exhale, begin to hinge forward from your hips. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold some more. Continue for another eight breaths in Gomukhasana, cow face pose. When you're ready, press down to your pelvis. Start by lifting your heart center. Then the rest of the spine comes up. Release the arms, release the legs straight. Pause a moment, a few breaths. Notice how you feel. Now let's turn out the left thigh at the hip and Wrap it over the right thigh as much as you can. Take the variation that you did on the first side with your legs, if that's possible. Take the strap in your right hand if you're gonna use it. Raise your right hand and dangle the long tail behind your back. Use your left hand to help you rotate your right outer upper arm forward, bringing the elbow behind your head and then press the shoulders down. Reach your left hand underneath behind you and catch the other end of the strap and walk your hands as close together as you can. Maybe letting go of the strap if your hands clasp. Root down to your two sitting bones. Lift up from the bottom of your spine to the back of your skull. Exhale, hinge forward little by little from the hips. The more you bow forward, the more rooted you also want to balance it off with. So pressing the hips down as you extend your heart forward. About eight more breaths. Press down with your pelvis, lead with your heart and breathe in to slowly rise up. Then release your arms and stretch the legs in front. Pause, be still and notice whatever there is to notice. This brings us to our next pranayama practice, which is sitali or shitkari, cooling breath. So sit in a way that you can feel the spine is spaciously tall, the body is relaxed, the so breath can flow easily. And you can rest your hands in any mudra that you choose, like thumb index, fingers touching, palms face down for grounding. Or to activate the energy of the heart, you can take the lotus mudra, inner heels of the palms together, inner thumbs, inner pinky, thumb tips resting at the sternum. So it begins by first choosing how you're gonna create the mouth shape. Either fold the left and right edges of your tongue to create a taco shape out of your tongue like this. 
at sitali. And if that doesn't work out, make a straw or pucker face lips like this. Shittari. So choose which one works for you, and then we will inhale through the lips with that shape. Hold the breath in as you close the mouth and touch the tongue tip to the roof of your mouth. When you can't comfortably hold the breath anymore, keep the mouth closed and exhale slowly through the nose. Let's try that three times together and then three times on your own. So empty this breath, prepare. Make your taco tongue or purse lips, inhale through the lips. Close the mouth, hold the breath, tongue tip to the roof. When you can't comfortably hold the breath anymore, exhale through the nose. At your pace, second one, inhale through the taco tongue or purse lips. Close the mouth, hold the breath, tongue to the roof. When you're ready, exhale slowly through the nose. Last one together. Inhale through tongue or lips. Close the mouth, hold the breath, tongue to the roof. Slowly empty the breath through the nose. Continue three more cycles of this cooling breathing technique. at your own pace and then sit breathing naturally after for a moment to pause and observe. Let's prepare for Supta Virasana, more to lengthen into the quadriceps and also help to prepare to open the heart space. So sit with your knees pointed forward and your toes pointed back, whether you're sitting on a block between your ankles or directly on your calves, or gently rolling the calves aside with your hands, sitting directly on the floor between the ankles. Press your pinky toenails down into the earth and keep your knees no wider apart than your hips distance. We're going to slowly lean back to whatever is comfortable for you. And then we'll stay for about three minutes there. So this is a restorative pose. So if you'd like to set up something to catch you like a recliner, you can have your pillows behind you. You can make an incline out of that pillow, putting a block underneath the farthest end of it or two blocks, or maybe add a blanket, make it as high as you need. Maybe you don't land on the pillow. Maybe you stay upright and you're already feeling plenty happening here. So let's begin. If you start to lean back, take it slowly and hug the bottom of your front ribs into the back. Lengthen the tailbone down and forward towards the space between your knees. And that's those two actions are to offer support and space in the lower back. So you're not hyperextending or overarching the lower spine. Keep your knees heavy on the ground. You might even place your palms face down on your hip creases, the fronts of your hip creases. Just that gentle weight can encourage a little more lengthening at the tops of your quadriceps, 
flexors. Get into areas of stagnancy, stagnancy where your body could use a bit more energy flow, a bit more life force moving around. Picture that in your mind's eye as we stay another three minutes here now. Make sure that you've positioned your body to a version of this posture in which you can be still and not have to fidget or keep rearranging. And then notice what that stillness offers you mentally, physically. Keep encouraging the flow of energy throughout all the different crevices of your body. Through your breathing, calm, slow breathing. We have one more minute to go. Listen to the end of this next breath. Then after, begin to move very slowly. Take your time pressing your hands into the floor. Slowly lifting your back, your head. Gently rising to sit. And then stretch your legs out in front of you as you're sitting in stick pose, dandasana. You might like to roll out your ankles, and flex your feet. That posture can be intense for the fronts of the ankles as well. And we're also opening up space behind the knees after that. Keep the breath flowing deeply. Let's prepare for thread the needle on hands and knees, the one that's for the upper back. So we can get into the back area of Anahata Chakra. So come down to hands and knees again and step the knees a couple inches behind your hips. Stack your shoulders over your wrists. We did a version last week in which you step the right foot out to the right. If you want to take that here or keep both knees on the ground up to you. Raise the right arm up. Inhale here. And exhale, thread the right arm under your left bent elbow. Rest the right side of your head all the way down, whether on the ground or on a pillow or block. Make sure it's relaxed. Level the height of your two hips. Soften the shoulders down the back. And let your rib cage turn as you broaden space across your upper back. Breathe into it. About four more deep breaths here.
After this breath, gently press up to your hands and knees. And set up the same way onto the second side. So if you stepped out the right foot, step out the left foot if that's available. Raise the left arm, inhale. Exhale, thread the left arm under your right bent elbow. Rest the left cheek all the way down. Use a pop if needed. Level your two hips in height. Then the shoulders down the back. And let your rib cage turn. Send the breath into the area behind the heart. About four more breaths here. When you're ready, gently press up. And let's bring the legs out in front as we set up for supported fish pose. Taking your two blocks, either tallest height at the rear end of your mat, medium height across the mat, or if you're feeling pretty open in the fronts of the shoulders right now, you could make the blocks like an equal sign. Tilting the block from behind the head lower. Lower than that, placing it on the lowest height. You can adjust when you're on it and see how it feels. Keep your pelvis on the ground and you can choose to either stretch the legs out, let the feet flop like Shavasana, or bend the knees, drop the knees together as the feet play apart. This helps to broaden across the lower back gently. Or come into another hip opening posture of Baddha Kanasana, soles of the feet together, knees flop apart maybe placing pillows under the other thighs. Then start to lean back. Aim the area that's right underneath the bottom tips of your shoulder blades to land on the closer block. Shoulders rolling into the space between the blocks. Land the back of your skull on the furthest block. Notice how it feels with the heights of the blocks, especially the one under your head. And make any adjustments of the blocks, including the positioning, just a slight shift, a millimeter in one direction can make such a difference. Prepare to be still here for the next three minutes. So make sure that you're comfortable, you have enough support to let your body just lean, collapse, surrender into the support without efforting to hold yourself up. Close your eyes. Inhale into your belly, expand into the rib cage gently. Hold it in for a moment. And then to your lips, slowly, slowly let it go, even longer than the in breath, all the way out to empty. Try that one last time on your own into the nose, and then longer exhale through the mouth. the emptying the breath let go of controlling your breathing and observe how it just flows naturally noticing the qualities of the breath as it is
we're about to transition into corpse pose or shavasana you might choose to stay in the position you're already in and not move but if you are coming out of it transition with mindfulness gentleness and care placing your body in a position where you can completely relax be still yet be present for grounding you might place a weighted blanket over your pelvis and belly we'll be here for a few minutes Resting here a moment longer. Keep your eyes closed. And notice how your body might be ready to start moving. Do so very slowly, very gently. From one movement easing into another. Slowly roll over onto your right side and rest your head on your arm. Stay a moment here. Then press your hands into the earth. Gently rise up. Find a way to sit for our five minutes of meditation, which will begin with Nodi Shodana Pranayama. We'll take three rounds of alternate nostril breathing. Again, the different breathing techniques are 
especially Nodi Shodana Pranayama, are ways to activate and help balance energy flow at Anahata Chakra, heart center. And Nodi Shodana is a great one to practice meditation with. So as soon as you finish your third one, we'll rest in stillness and silence, observing. So place your left hand in a mudra of your choice, maybe pran mudra, like a peace sign, palm face up, or chin or gyan mudra, thumb and index finger to touch. Right hand is in Vishnu mudra, sticking out the thumb, pinky, and ring finger. Closing the lips, continue to breathe slowly and gently through the nose. And you might steady your gaze at your heart center this time. Eyes closed if you like, picturing the color associated with the energy of the heart, which is emerald green, green glowing light, bringing the qualities of compassion, joy, balance, and harmony. Let's begin, empty this breath. Cover the right nostril with your right thumb, inhale through the left slowly. Pull the breath in. Cover the left nostril with pinky and ring. Exhale to right. Pull the breath out. Inhale through right. Pull the breath in. Cover right with thumb. Exhale through left. Pull the breath out. Second cycle. Inhale through left for six. Hold the breath in for three. Cover the left nostril. Exhale through right for six. Hold the breath out for three. Inhale right for six. Hold it in for three. Cover right, exhale left for six. Hold it out for three. Take the last cycle on your own. When you finish at your own pace, rest your hands in a mudra that you choose for a last few minutes sitting in silence.
notice how the area of the heart space feels for you. Notice the energy at the chest. Notice the quality of the breath, just as it is. Feel into your mental and emotional state now. And what's at least one thing you can offer gratitude for? Now bring to mind your intention that you set for this practice. Let in a deep breath as you fill up with that feeling. And continue to expand it as you exhale. Then remember your dedication to someone or something. To whom or what did you offer this practice to? Visualize them receiving benefit from your practice. The seed sound or bija mantra or the heart energy center here now is the sound you might make when you taste something delicious. An activated heart center has that feeling. And the sound is yum. Let's take three rounds, inhale. Yeah. 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 in towards your heart center. The light in me bows to the light. Namaste. Namaste.